Hi, I'm John Gierke. Um, as Rich indicated, I'm the Western Area Academy Manager for the U.S. Um, representing the, the program. My new title is actually Corporate and Social Responsibility Manager because we're going to be taking on some other give back projects as time moves ahead uh, in addition to the Networking Academy, but that doesn't really mean anything for a lot of people. Um, with that said, what I wanted to talk about today was kind to use the Academy program business model and, and what we do and just remind people of our core offerings and then uh, kind of transition into Linux because we're enhancing our curriculum. We've, we've had our core curriculum for 17 years of the program now. We've had a couple of foundational courses like the IT Essentials where we support Computer Day Plus exam. And Linux is important in a lot of ways, and, and I'll get into that and, and why it's also philosophic, open source is philosophically important to Cisco. Um, just told you what I wanted to talk about. Rich, I hope you have the right presentation on here. Just the Linux. I guess, all right, I guess I didn't update the uh, agenda. Oh, my fault. I grabbed one. No, no, that's that's fine. I didn't finish my work. <laughs> so the Cisco Networking Academy, as I mentioned earlier, um, I guess before I continue, can I see a show of hands for you that are, are currently academy instructors or have academies in your schools? So there's probably only about 30% of the folks in here that aren't affiliated with academies. And I know some of you have other job roles. Are there folks in here that are interested in starting academies or getting new information on it? And what school are you from? Oh, welcome. Oh, okay. Very good. <coughs> so this will be kind of replication or um, information for some of you guys. Uh, for the rest of you, I'll kind of go through this, but I'm going to move through it pretty rapidly so we can get to the Linux portion. Um, the Cisco Networking Academy is Cisco's largest corporate and social responsibility give back initiative within education. We probably have invested over half a billion dollars in the 17 years of the program in the form of in-kind value, 24-7 um, help desk support and all the other things we do, the, the value of the curriculum. We donate the curriculum to any nonprofit organization. The important thing in this slide is that we follow the multiple pathways model. So if you look at the bottom right hand quadrant of this slide, we really are helping students get ready to do one of three different things. Uh, prepare for an entry level job, prepare to take an industry uh, certification exam, or to continue with their post secondary education. If they're in a high school and they want to transfer those credits to a community college, that's a pretty common model in our system or if they're in a community college and want to transfer to a four-year college, that's becoming more and more common, especially with the addition of strong four-year colleges like Cal Poly Pomona in Southern California and community colleges um, surrounding them. So we operate under a public-private partnership model. Um, within that model, let me go ahead and get to the next slide. I guess I left, left that out. Um, within that model, Cisco donates the curriculum, as I mentioned before, to any nonprofit organization. We also maintain the help desk. We offer web-based curriculum that's accessible either from the classroom or from a student's home 24-7. And then on the other side of that partnership, the school provides the instructor, the classroom space, um, access to the internet, the students. Um, I think those are the key drivers. If we look at the size and scope of the program, we basically consider ourselves the world's largest classroom. We now serve one million plus unique students on an annual basis. And that's only measuring students one time. So students taking two classes, three classes over 12 months, we're only counting them once. Um, 20,000 instructors worldwide and over 100 million exams taken online since the inception of the program. If we look at the size in the United States, we, in the last 12 months, have had 147,000 students um, since inception, over a million. If you look at California and throw that into the mix, California is the largest state with the most students. It's showing enrollment up there of 19,500. Again, those are um, unique students that are only counted once. If I look at my non-distinct student metrics where we count every student that's taken every all of the courses, so if a student's taken three courses, we count them three times. 
the California number is probably closer to 22,000 students. I talked about that public-private partnership model. This just kind of recaps um, what we're offering on our side of that partnership. Again, the curriculum discounts uh, on equipment up to 70% off. The other thing that's a real benefit is the discounted uh, certification exams. And I think that discounts up to like 58% now uh, on the Cisco exams. And then as I mentioned before, what does the school partner provide in, in the partnership? Classroom space, instructors, funding like Perkins or other to purchase lab equipment bundles. Um, student PCs for looking at the uh, content in the classroom and internet connectivity to be able to access the curriculum. Um, some of the benefits or key elements of the program is instant feedback. We have some of the informative assessments and so those assessments are taking place in real time and giving students instant feedback, good or where they might need to improve. Um, gaming, we're using gaming in um, combination with our case studies we have in our entrepreneurial course and students can take what they've learned in the case studies and go out and practice in a gaming environment. So in other words, if, they're, if the task is to open up a successful internet cafe and they need to make decisions on whether they lease equipment or buy equipment or how they're going to operate, they can do that in kind of a competitive environment, have a leaderboard and, and compete against other students in the same scenario. Simulations, this is probably, it's hard to explain the value of Packet Tracer to new instructors uh, or prospective instructors. The Packet Tracer is our um, network virtualization tool, or simulation tool. It allows students to design and configure networks virtually. It allows students to take skills-based assessments within the Packet Tracer environment. And equally important is inside the classroom, Packet Tracer can pick up those students who might not have access to the labs because the labs are being used by other students and so it can supplement the hardware that you have in the classroom. Social media is real big. I, this talks about it from a student perspective, but the uh, instructor involvement with the instructor Facebook community is just huge. Um, and it really seems to be a benefit. Our technical advocacy team has done a great job managing that. Um, move on. This is getting to be a bit of an eye chart, and this is where I want to kind of transition over to Rich in the next couple of minutes. This is our core curriculum, and this is probably what most of you are familiar with. And so we have IT Essentials, which maps to the A plus exam. This is the only exam that doesn't belong to Cisco directly. All of the courses, the individual courses, are based on the 70 hour semester system. For those of you that are newer perspective, the one caveat I would throw out there, and probably a lot of you, especially Richard and others, recognize this, is that the two new CCNA entry level courses, the CCNA 1 and the CCNA 2, have about 30 to 40 percent more content than the previous versions that they replace. It's making some instructors, particularly at the K-12 level, a little bit nervous because they had a, had a book for a semester they find the first time they teach it is taking them longer to get that done. And so now in course preparation, they're taking a year, at least at the K-12 level, to teach it out. Now, the community has kind of come to the rescue in a lot of ways. We have some really rock star instructor trainers like Bob Sampson down in the Phoenix area, Mason Community College, for example, so that when he trains new instructors on teaching CCNA 1 and 2, he's pointing out some of those pitfalls and helping them streamline or possibly streamline the course while they're going through the instructor training. Uh, how do you delete information that's being replicated or what are some of the other tips and tricks? And so the community is aware of it, but for those of you that are newer perspective, I put that out there as something to give consideration to. So these two new courses map to the CSENT certification. We still have health information networking available. Uptake on it has been very bad, very poor the last couple of years. We came out with health, health Information Networking as part of the Workforce Retraining Investment Act in Michigan to help displaced auto workers find jobs. And then we released it in the U.S. and then in Canada. And so it's available, but that's what all I'm going to say about it. I, I don't know how much longer it's going to be supported for. CCNA routing and switching maps to the new CCNA routing and switching certification. 
they've kind of taken the class three and four that used to be part of just the generic CCNA certification and have made it an advanced technology certification now. So CSEN is now the fundamental um, routing and switching exam. And if you want to specialize, you can move to actual CCNA routing and switching. You can move to CCNA security or CCNA wireless. Um, but this is kind of the entry level. This now becomes an advanced technology uh, exam. CCNA security still maps to its own exam. It's one course. And CCNP uh, is three courses. Uh, the only other thing I guess I would add to our core curriculum is that CCNP, as most of you know, is a very small addressable audience. We rely on Cisco Press Books, of which Rick Graziani is one of our authors in the back, um, well, for the IPv6 especially, um, to deliver the, the content. However, you can still use the NetSpace platform for grade books, opening exams, and all the things you do with the other curriculum. So with that, moving on, this just kind of illustrates the different exams that we are aligned with. No secrets there. And then additional course offers. This is really important. And this is kind of the thrust of what we want to finish talking about today. So why are we doing this? Um, really to increase workforce readiness skills. As I mentioned in the opening, why are we moving towards something like Linux? Why are we moving towards something like the internet of, of everything, for example? Linux is a foundational course, and it's, it's, cor it's knowledge that students should probably have before they enter our core courses. Um, the open source model, especially where you have community involvement like that in the development of <laughs> technology, um, and especially a strong instructor ecosystem that Cisco enjoys, is also very important to Cisco's philosophy. So a couple of good reasons. Um, also, by expanding beyond the core that we previously had, we're trying to grow the pipeline for Medicaid uh, just in general. Some of these are going to be course offerings that are people self enroll in for personal knowledge, and others are going to be um, courses that are aligned with industry certification, with, like the Linux Essentials that Rich is going to talk about. This just lists some of the new ones that have come out recently and where they came from. And so you can see what was developed by Cisco and what you're already familiar with. A couple of the new self-enroll include uh, Intro to Cybersecurity and Internet of Everything. These have been out for a while. We call them courses, but really what they are is supplemental content if you're already teaching the subject matter and you want additional material to include. And then, Rich, I'm going to hand it off now for you to talk about Linux decisions. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. So, for personal life reasons, I want to compliment John. If you work for Cisco, you work your Toshi off more than likely. Um, I know from my personal life. These guys work hard to serve others. And why I'm proud to partner with Cisco is we want to work with Cisco to help your students build the building blocks so that in the IT industry, not only can they get an internship, but they can truly start the path of being competitive. There's so many critical skills today that are in the open source arena that are truly coming from the Linux community. In other words, Linux is that cornerstone tool that's building the building block. So what John's doing is he's trying to figure out how to take all those business units at Cisco and then marry them to opportunity for your students. And we're pleased to partner with John's company, Cisco, to make that happen. Now how we're going to do that is NDG is actually going to take money that we've received for delivering other programs. We partnered with Cisco since 2001. We partnered with VMware since 2006. We partnered with VNC since 2007. I can go on and on. We've worked many grant consortiums. What we do is we turn around and reinvest back in new things. So we built a full-blown Linux course, but we took it a little different path. We studied the marketplace, and what we found was there was a high dropout rate at the first Linux course. You guys see that? What we saw was most of the students walking into your classroom were real comfortable with GUI. And they were intimidated like crazy with the command line, right? And if you didn't give them a lot of little building blocks, they really struggled. You know, this is not only a two-year school, but four-year school. Some of the four-year schools, what they were doing is they were making the assumption the learner knew enough about Linux to keep up with the professor when they covered content using Linux, but Linux wasn't the content in the classroom. Make sense? 
So we figured this was a sweet spot for us to invest in. So we worked with Cisco and Linux Professional Institute to try to develop the course. But here's what's really important. If the course is good, we take credit. If the course is bad, we take credit, and I'm responsible, and we're going to fix it. So I want you all to hear me being serious about this, because we're doing this worldwide, and we need to do it right. Okay. Go ahead, John. Can I interject one quick thing? Sure. I was under the misnomer. I worked for Cisco for a few months when we first developed this relationship. Richard's organization actually developed this content. He, he did not partner with LTI and, and bring it in and act like the middle man. No. We did the whole thing. They had the certification, and, and these guys did some really good work. So who are we? We are actually a small business. There are 15 guys that work for NDG. 15. But we also work with contractors. We have product in 60 countries in the world. Right now, there's 70,000 virtual machines running right this moment serving students around the world. 15 guys. I'm really proud of that. There are over 7,000 Cisco devices hosted around the world for training purposes in our product and services. But what we're doing is taking that capital and reinvesting it in building online courses and other content. Why? Content is key. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, substance in the content that leads to a job is what we all need to focus on. Does anybody disagree with that? That's where I want to invest. Okay? So my mission is to run a company that sustains itself with good business plans but serves your learners to get jobs. I'm 100% in academia right now. I will take this commercial. And by the way, I'm hearing a lot of demand for it commercial. Okay? Now we did this course totally free for instructor led training. So every instructor in the room can take this Linux course, set it up in Cisco NetSpace today, and it doesn't cost you a penny. Go ahead, Bill. You create him into the account in the NetSpace. Does not have to have any kind of training to teach this. You just create the account. You teach him how to do it. Add his students, you're off the race. Oh, okay. so Guess what? If you're not Cisco Network Academy today, you can join just to teach this class. I just to so everybody in this room oh can, can go talk to John. It's, it's a change of the business model, but the other cool thing is, like I said, we believe in our community. You know, we have the Western Academy Support Training Center looking at possibly developing instructor training around limits. I mean, you, you can do what you like. You can, all right, so I got good data for you, though. Let's let's actually talk about what we're doing here. You know, in my opinion, the key for your students is employability. Maybe some of your students just want to try it out, but the students that are truly on a job track, it's about employability. So we purposely partnered with a certification body. We purposely picked LPI. We had other choices. Anybody know why we didn't pick the other choices? Two vendor specific. We did not want to tie you to a Linux distribution that would cost you licensing fees, support fees, or join fees. So we went to a 100% open source certification program that was worldwide already. Okay? So that's why we made the choice we did. Now, we will make other choices for advanced Linux beyond the first two levels. But at the first two levels, no offense, anybody listen to okay? I hope you're not offended. Schools are cheap. They don't want to pay fees. And we're trying to give you a model you can pull off. Now, there's money in the system, but where we need to spend the money is on the high-end professional track, where it really truly is going to cost some money for that student. But on the entry, we can try to get students built up, right? So that's our goal. Now, that certification is not easy. I'll tell you why it's not easy. A lot of people, when they hear entry-level class, they go, oh, this is going to be cake. This is going to be, you know, no problem. You actually have to remember commands because you're going to be tested on your knowledge of the commands. So you have to do the labs and study the material and pass the cert. You are not going to have a 100% certification pass rate. I guarantee it, even for this entry level cert. Does that intimidate or bother anybody in the room? I personally think it's the right way to go. And I'll tell you why. Whenever you have a certification, you have a 100% pass rate to the employers that certification is worth zero. If I know you had to work hard to pass the certification, it is worth something. So we want to keep the bar high. So this Linux Essentials credential that we mapped to from LPI is a professional development certificate. It's offered by Pearson View. It is going to cost your student a little north of $100. 
But guess what? You get a big discount that LPI and Pearson View are working on to give you. So if you just pass your student net space, they get that discount. So you get a letter from LPI with that discount. Okay? I would say not take this credential unless you have another credential. Let me explain. If you pass the CSET or the CCNA and you're looking to be competitive in the marketplace, you're only going to take one Linux class, put this on your resume. Right? If you're going to be 100% on the Linux job track, it's not as critical that you put this on your resume. Right? And I'll tell you why. I've hired a lot of Cisco Network Academy graduates got their CCNA. Within three weeks of working with my team, what do you think they hear? I'm tired of telling you the Linux command. Get a book, read about Linux. Because the guys have been in the market seven, eight years, they're using Linux for most of the open source infrastructure things we use, right? Our internal tools. Everything's running on Linux and open source. We get frustrated when that person keeps asking the same question, same questions, not learning on their own. More than likely, if they're intern, they're not going to get a job. So I would strongly encourage somebody on a Cisco track to at least get this credential on their resume. Okay? If you're on a Linux track, I'd wait for the LP1 Linux Plus. Okay? All right. Now, our goal is to help learners succeed at a higher rate, lower the dropout rate, plus help people on a job track show that extra credential. All right? Now, my business motivation is to put you in a position where you use this content any way you want. I do not care how you use it, as long as it's instructor-led training. Anybody in the room know why I did that? That's my business decision. Why I won't let you just turn it on as an online book for self-paced learning? Anybody know why? I'm going to give it to you for free. You're going to turn it on online. You're going to get 50,000 students. And they're all going to come directly to me and fuss at me when they have every little pickup. Or, and now my costs go out the roof and I can't sustain. Why in the world would I sign up that unsustainable business model? You only get it free for instructor-led training. I will charge a fee for self-paced, which will be fair and equitable, because that helps me sustain the whole thing and offer it to you for free. Make sense? Sound fair? All right, great. But you can use it any way you want. A hobby, a club, cyber patriot high school learning, you know, high schools building skills. I'm all for it, as long as you give us brand credit and instructors involved so that we're not trying to help every student in the world. Okay? You know, this maps as a starting track. The next track is LPIC 1. How many of you are familiar with Linux Professional Institute? Everybody in the room? Anybody not familiar? Okay, I'll, I'll quickly go over what they do. All right, now, before I get there, as I mentioned earlier, this is vendor neutral certification body and the course is aligned to them. But we will have advanced offerings aligned to their next cert. I am already looking into talking to distribution companies about more advanced Linux. So if that's of interest, talk to me later. All right, Linux Professional Institute, they're worldwide. That's very important. We're going to align with Cisco program, right? They're worldwide. They have to be for us to do this. They have master fields all over the world. They've got these certification tracks, these four. This is basically a certificate that says, I know enough about the Linux command line to be dangerous. You would not hire this person to do anything in the industry. You would not. I'm not going to snow you. not going to... You would basically know if that's on their resume, <laughs> if they know Cisco or something else. More than likely, I don't have to start them from zero with learning Linux commands. That's all I know from that. But that's important. It's very important to me as an employer. Every person I've hired out of these vendor programs, I've had to teach them Linux, and that's cost me money. I've been in staff meetings where they're yelling at each other, not because they don't want to do a good job, but because the intern is slowing everybody down, and they're like, I've had enough. Study Linux. That would solve that problem for me. Okay? LPIC 1 is actually the same certification as CompTIA Linux. <laughs> Do you guys know that? Absolutely the exact same cert. This person would be like a CCNA. LPIC 2 would be like a CCNP. LPIC 3 would be like your CCIE, so that we get quick comparison in the Cisco language. These are going to take heavy study, and it's going to be two courses to pass it. We have the first course in small market trial right now. Anybody doing the small market trial? Great. Have you got it through it yet? Any content? Not yet. Okay. It's starting. Richard? First four modules. Do you like it so far? Yeah. Okay, great. So when we're done, we'll have two courses that align to these two certification exams. We will charge a book fee per learner, but this will continue to be free. Now, we believe based on studying and getting responses from people, that's going to be an economically sustainable model. 
the learners will be willing to pay at this level because, again, this credential is equal to a CCNA and is job ready. Okay? Are the books online or do they have to purchase? It's going to be in this space if Cisco chooses to go after the small market trial pilot. If not, it needs to be a workout model. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, this is entry level. I don't want to stress it any further, but I want to make sure that people understand there is value here. But no one is going to be a pro at this level. This is the level you're starting to be a pro, L pick one. This is also a, a, a value here. If you take CompTIA Linux Plus, you can actually, in our market, get credit for these three certifications, believe it or not. So you take these two tests from CompTIA, you'll get the L pick one, the SUSE, and the Linux Plus, all from those bodies. So it's great value for a learner to put a lot of credentials on their resume list. Okay? If you take L pick one, you're not going to get credit for Linux Plus. CompTIA has got it set up with LPI, that you've got to take this one and then you get credit for all three. But they're actually the same offerings. Okay? All right, LPIC2, this is a very advanced Linux system administrator. Not a lot of people are going to get to this level, and even less are going to get to this level. All right? Now, if you look at jobs, and I showed this earlier, there are tons of Linux jobs. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. I think we all believe it. There's no need to convince everyone. Just do a DICE or Indeed.com search for your city. There's going to be Linux jobs. All right. The course is already in NetSpace. How many of you already created the class in NetSpace? Terrific. Um, straight up. What do you think? Good course? Value for your learners? Yeah. Did your learners, did they give you feedback they were happy with the concept? Virtual machine make your life easier? Great. All right. So what we've done is right inside of NetSpace, we are passing a virtual machine to every learner in the world that uses the course. Well, we've got some pretty high numbers already. We released the course, I think, at the end of July. And uh, there's some pretty large numbers out there in volume. And it's going to keep growing, I believe. But that virtual machine is there, so your student can basically read, which is like a book of content, and then play with commands as they're reading. Okay? The first four chapters of the course is just introducing open source and concepts around Linux. That's it. They're not, they can play with that virtual machine, but we're not teaching them any commands. Chapter 5 on, we get into a lot of commands. All right. The labs themselves are purposely, and will continue to be this, purposely written to be very prescriptive. Anybody know why I'm doing that? Why I just demanded it be like that? Support tickets. This crowd will absolutely eat your lunch. Also, I want to keep the value high for the instructors. Let me explain. If I give you the base and the core in a full-blown course, now you can challenge your student up with other things. So what you're going to see me add is eventually little capstones. Like, how would you like to have a, a business case with a Raspberry Pi? If you want to do this, buy some Raspberry Pis and go at it. Where those are extra modules that get added into the courses. How about if the instructor community starts submitting capstones and, and scenarios and Raspberry Pis? See where we want to go? So we'll give you the base core, and then you can build on top of that. So that's where we're going to try to go with this. We already have assessments. Now, unfortunately, we had to build our own assessment engine. So NDG staff had to write an assessment engine. The time we did this, we were the first to go. No other partner program has worked with Cisco inside their learning management system. So we developed our own assessment engine, and we had 90 days to build it. Anybody ever built an assessment engine? It's not cheap. It's not easy. And no matter how well you put it together, there's going to be somebody that's not happy. You, you just can't please everyone and all the features and functionality. It would go on and on in cost. That assessment engine is ready. If you look at it as an instructor, we give you an answer key as an instructor. Students obviously don't have the, instruct, the uh, instructor's answer key, but that is available to you. You're in control of the assessments, but since we had to write our own assessment engine, it's not going to work like your Cisco NetSpace assessments. A, a few of you may have already seen that. We've had a few tickets around that. Okay. We give you a PowerPoint slide deck for every chapter. Now, we don't have these for the LPIC1 small market trial yet. We're working on it. Oh, they are? Yeah. They just put them up. Wow. Are you serious? Well, Richard knew before I knew. <laughs> Gotta love my stuff. Good deal. I love that. All right. So, PowerPoints are ready for LPIC1 small market trial too. No. <laughs> Linux Essentials, the PowerPoints are out there. All you got to do is download them under Instructor Resources. All support is online. Why did I do this? Again, I'm trying to make a sustainable business model. 
I do not want to have a 1-800 answer. It's too expensive. It's just that even if I outsourced it somewhere to a lower cost country, it would be too expensive. So all help is electronic. If you click on that help by using the course itself, you get a pull down that allows you to give us feedback, typos, bug reports, questions, etc. And we're averaging about one ticket per week per 10,000 users. Compare that cost to maybe having a help desk, and I'll tell you why. Once you give somebody a 1 800 number, there's this in intuitive instinct to pick up and call instead of read. When you make people click through and read the FAQs, it lowers the cost of ownership. And while that's a big deal for us as an audience, it means I can invest the dollars I would in support labor into another course. Maybe I'll do an introduction to big data. I don't know. Do you see where I'm going? All right, here's the feedback we got in the small market trial. I'm still waiting on all the data. I have the reports from this last semester. Um, it looks a little lower from what I've seen so far. We're more like the 78% was students saying they would recommend the class to another student. In the small market trial, we were at 87%. I suspect that's pretty normal. You're going to see a little bit of a drop off in the small market trial until you get into the masses. Um, but that's still a pretty good number. 78% of the students would recommend so far. 87 in the small market trial. Instructor feedback has been just as positive in the production as it was in the small market trial. 91% of the instructors would recommend it to another. 100% um, of them plan in the small market trial to offer the course. The only thing I could figure is that 9% gap is associated with Linux instructors who know they could do a better job than we did. <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. Usually this crowd is pretty proud of their work and their knowledge base. So I'm okay with that. All right, here's an example of a school in Italy. Now, remember, they're teaching it Italian, but they use the content. Here's their feedback from the course. It's a little different chart. Five is on the outside, which is really positive. Zero would be really negative. And notice all our feedback came in really high. They were really interested in people understood the certification alignment on Linux Essential. That has nothing to do with our course. They were really interested if they understood open source technology value. And then here's our course on the left. And you see you got pretty good rating from the instructors. And then the students were even higher. They were pretty happy with their teachers, very happy with the labs, and very happy with the uh, course itself. So it came back really positive. Same thing in the U.S., but actually a little higher in the U.S. Um, their big feedback was please do the LPIC 101 level, the next certification, okay, which we're doing. And they asked for more of those workshops like the Raspberry Pi type workshops. Uh, give me some more hands on that I can do and stretch my, my knowledge base. I believe that should be in the classroom led by the instructor. What do you think? I agree. Yeah, anybody push back on that? Should we be doing that yeah. in the content? No? I'm okay with pushback, guys. But having an open community where people can take good ideas and suggest them. Yeah, we're talking to Cisco about putting in something in their instructor community. So this class is ready for you to set up right now. If you've got a NetSpace account, log in, create it, go use it. If you don't have a NetSpace account, my question is why not? Join the Cisco Network Academy. It's free. Why not? Okay, Linux Essentials Assessment. Remember I said it was different? Right here. Under Resources, you're going to see these links. This is where you get your instructions for how to set up the assessments. Now, um, I often get asked questions about, okay, this is a course in Cisco. Cisco has rules for quality. We're professional instructors. What do we need to do so we can teach this class? All you need to do is have a qualified instructor. That's your business decision. In other words, we're putting the content out there. At this level, we're pretty confident you can find somebody to teach this material. If you're a professional IT instructor, I would argue you could study the material on your own and teach us. Richard, would you agree? The Linux Essentials? I would agree. Uh, however, it, it would be great to have a, a place where you could go you know, get some of that training and help. Perfect. We have a plan for that. Perfect. So um, Cisco's model for training trainers is a support center to support you if you're a Cisco Network Academy. So if you're new to Cisco Network Academy, you can work with a support center to answer all your questions, help you get started, get you set up in NetSpace if you got questions. And then they also have a lot of centers that do training. And Richard, are you guys going to run a train the trainer for Linux Assessments? We are. We did that last summer at Cal Poly Pomona during the summer conference. And we're planning on surprising that again 
this summer, uh, same place, same venue. And Actually, also, yeah, in March we're going to be doing an instructor training. We've never done this before; it's brand new. Um, instructor training for Linux Essentials. It will be fully online. Most likely, it will be Saturday mornings for about five weeks, about two hours of session. Saturday mornings, fully online. Dennis Kitty from uh, Mesa Community College will be teaching the class. This should be, in fact, Dennis, I think, was involved with the curriculum. Um, we asked him if he wanted to help a little on the LPIC one. Uh, okay. so, yeah. yeah, he's familiar with it. Yeah, we would like to, yeah. to add, you know, the Cisco Academy is free, right? But uh, you do have to belong to a support center. Uh, that's one of the requirements of Cisco has, and there are fees associated with that. Uh, and uh, Karen and I uh, support the Western Academy uh, support and training center that serves California and Nevada and Arizona, but. Uh, and I think we charge 300 and something a year for that support. Uh, but if uh, we're seriously considering, if you're only interested in delivering the Linux class and you want to have access to those, then uh, we can certainly work with a different fee structure for that than, than what we have for the CCNA courses. So we'll work with you. I'll, I'll leave it to everybody in the room that's not a Cisco Network Academy to chat with John about joining and then Karen and Richard about support and training. So I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, as I understand it, support centers and training centers to define their models. So I think we'll have the freedom to define your model around the Linux course, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to become an academy today to teach this course, you can do it. Again, you can work with John if you've got questions about the program. I understand that they're going to be doing some adjustments around courses like Linux in the future. I don't have any details. No one has them. Cisco is very good about delivering quality and having structure. So when their model changes, I'm sure they'll announce it formally through, through their channels. But right now, you would join. You would follow the same program. But you do not need equipment. So if you're thinking you've got to invest in Cisco equipment, et cetera, et cetera, again, get Richard and Karen's information. Talk to John, OK? All right, now, the support model. MDG is responsible for the course and the virtual machines. Why is this important? If you like the business model, you like it's free for ILT for introduction, there's a small built fee in the future, like an online LMS fee, that's on MDG. If you don't like it, that's on MDG, OK? It's our brand, our responsibility. Okay? So I want to make sure that that's real clear to everyone. That's very important. Now Cisco is supporting the learning management system, NetSpace. Okay? We're using learning technology interoperability to look deliver it. See, that is basically the standard we're using to deliver the course around the world to all the learners. Okay? But NetSpace is the key from a learning management system. LPI is working on training the trainer materials. And Tamara, do you want to know Ross Brunson? Anybody in the room know Ross? Ever been to one of his sessions? Okay. Ross is a commercial instructor. He teaches people commercially, you know, at the LPIC 2, et cetera, level. He's going to be here to run little mini workshops around Linux Essentials, like a 30 minute how to teach to the CERT, and then the same thing for LPIC 1, the first LPIC 1 course, if you're interested. Now, the LPIC 1 course is very similar. It's designed to be a full course, full semester. It's around 70 hours. Um, there's 27 chapters. Linux Essentials was 16 chapters. Now you might go, well, the other course was aimed at 70 hours. What's the difference? The pace of learning. The learner to pass the LPIC 1 could have to pass two exams. There's a course for each exam. But the learning pace is much higher here. 27 chapters, 24 lab ex exercises compared to 16 chapters and 12 labs. Now, I believe this is going to be something that's going to work out OK. Let me explain. By the time the learner walks into this class, they should know they're walking into a professional career development class. You, you with me? Your first Cisco course, you start them out a little slower. Are you really wanting to do this? Is this for you, right? Your first A plus, net plus, you're not intimidating them by expecting them to configure things right out the gate. I would personally offer Linux Essentials, but the students who have the aptitude because on their own have learned Linux that wanted to skip Linux Essentials, I would allow them to. They just need to know the pace of this is going to be very intense. If I was a four-year university and my students' aptitude in IT was high, maybe Dan, most of your students probably already know Linux, maybe. 
I might do LPIC 1 as my main course and then have an elective of when it's essentials for those that were intimidated at the LPIC 1 level that need to get caught up to their peers. Make sense? Okay, good. Notice the learning objectives are going to be much higher. We're going to cover some of the same material, but notice we've got a lot more learning objectives that are going to be tested on when they take the certification exam. This is one certification exam of two. So the material is going to get much more intense. Okay? All right, so we've got 27 chapters. We've got a lot more objectives that they've got to get prepared to pass the cert. Okay? The material is going to be changed, too, because it's a professional course, professional cert. What we're going to do, I'll show it to you, is we're going to give them more resources. Ah. So what I'm going to do is log into the LPIC 1 course and show you actual access to the course itself. Linux Essentials is very similar, 100% online. I am up and running in the course. Now it's going to take a little longer for the virtual machine to boot up. Now while the virtual machine is booting up, notice I've got my course content. Thank you, Rick. And I can navigate my course content. In every chapter, we list the objectives that the learner must know, that they must make sure they've studied, that they're going to be tested in the CERT. And we also list the key terms that they're going to need to memorize. And we do this on purpose, and then we link to those key terms so we can still take them right to the section so they can refresh themselves as they're studying. And Ross is going to go over best practices to prepare for taking the LPI certification. But as you can see, we are really aiming at helping the learner get prepared for the CERT. So right out the gate, we start them on the learning objectives that are going to be tested on the CERT. And here is a, the virtual machine. Again, it's a real virtual machine running real Linux. All right, so I've got, Rick gave me the five minutes. I covered a lot of content on purpose. Tomorrow at Linux Essentials is going to be more deep dive. I'll, I'll demo the content at Linux Essentials. Then Ross is going to talk about passing this, the credential, the CERT certificate. Then if they'll pick one session tomorrow, I'll demonstrate the content in a little more detail, and then Ross is going to actually go into getting prepared for the certification. All right, so questions. Who's got questions? I got a question. I know I did a lot of PowerPoint. I apologize for that. There was a lot of data to cover. Is this worth it? Is this something I should keep investing in? Yeah? Okay, give me a show of hands so I know how many people value it. David Durkee does. That's good. I know he's doing something. Or everybody does. That's great. LPIC 1, is it worth investing in? Knowing that the student's going to have to pay a fee to kind of sustain the whole model. How much is that? Don't know yet. And it all depends on how much it costs to roll out the virtual machines. For Linux Essentials, all virtual machines are the same for the entire course. For LPIC 1, we have to roll out, I think it's five different virtual machines. And the advanced virtual, virtual machines get into tougher topics. The next course will also have GUI in it. So it's going to be much more expensive to deliver the virtual machine. We don't get into the GUI until the second LPIC 1 course, our Linux Plus course. Okay? It's beginning to look to me like the, uh, the LPIC 1 course actually ought to be worth more units than Linux Essentials. For example, Center of the Junior College intro Linux and Unix is three units. This is more intense. I, I, I'll leave that course. to the audience and, and um, I. I have to kind of be careful, let me explain, because I'm working with a global marketplace. I've got to do this very generic statement mm -hmm. and not just do it the westernized thing. Because the minute I go over to Europe, they go, you Americans are all the same. American companies are all about the U.S. They're hearing this right now and they're cursing at me. You know, so, so I've got to do a very generic statement and that's all I'll publish, if you, if you will. But you're welcome to use it however it works in your syllabus. Other questions? Okay, I've gotten the feedback I need tomorrow. Um, you honestly don't need to sit in our sessions if you just want to go through this content. All you got to do is get access to Cisco NetSpecs, work with Richard, Karen, work with John, get into Cisco Network Academy. If odds are you don't believe the Cisco Network Academy is something you can consume in the short term, you can't figure out the model, you can't join the program, 
Come to session tomorrow, we'll get you access so you can play around in the course. That's probably what some of you want in the room, and that's fine. We'll give you access to the course, let's play around in it. We can set up a 30-day class, let's try it out as trainer, instructor development. I personally hope you'll join, and I'll tell you why. The metrics, as you look at the whole world, defines where I invest again. It shouldn't take a rocket time to figure it out, right? We always hear the big data. Well, it makes sense. If the outcome that I'm after costs me a million, if I invest a million and I get three times the outcome, well, I'm willing to invest another million, right? If I invest a million, I lose my shirt, nobody is taking the course. Why am I investing the course? I go invest my time and energy somewhere else. That's why I need you to join the program, because it's a pretty big gamble. And million might be a little less than what I got tied up in all this. It's pretty expensive to do this. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I got shirts up here. For those that didn't come to the other session, there's some VMware shirts outside the box. Please consider the VMware IT Academy if you grab the shirt. At least Google it. But um, until the shirts are out, you're welcome to the shirts. Thank you, everyone.